Hello, uh, my dear students, my dear international students. Um, the thing is that uh, I have decided to uh, make this recording in English because um, happily to me, there are um, a number of uh, students residing in different countries uh, who have been watching my videos who are dedicated to uh, physical chemistry and physics. And uh, at times they come up against problems with understanding what exactly I mean when saying something or making another comment. And uh, as they say, they have to look up the new words and collocations in a good dictionary to understand what I meant to say. Uh, well, on the one hand, it's a good thing to do actually, because by the, by doing this uh, on a regular basis, uh, these students may have a chance, may stand a chance to pick up Russian, <laughs> which is not a bad thing to do actually. Well, uh, on the other hand, yes, I understand their position, and um, actually, this is the main reason why I uh, have made up my mind uh, to make the recording of this particular uh, problem, which I have prepared for you in English. Well, um, the first problem which I have decided to uh, offer for your consideration is uh, taken from a set of problems um, offered for applicants to uh, Moscow International Physics in, uh, Institute. Uh, it's a very, very, very uh, well-known and uh, prestigious university in the Russian Federation. Um, again, it's not uh, a problem offered for first-year students, no, only for those who uh, uh, who want to study there, who want to uh, pass their entrance examinations. And for that reason, you should understand the level of physics and physical chemistry uh, taught in, at that university. Well, um, the problem itself um, will show up on the, on the screens of your computers in a moment. Hold on a second, please. Here it is. I, get, I hope that you can see that. So in the beginning of the, in the beginning, the state of uh, new moles of ideal gas changes in the isochoric way from uh, 0.1 to 0.2, then it changes isobarically uh, when the uh, pressure uh, keeps constant from 0.2 to 0.3. Well, uh, also, uh, the relation between the pressures in uh, points 1 and 2 is defined, and it equals K. I mean to say that uh, P2 over P1 uh, 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 equals K. Also, it's known that in point 0.3, uh, the temperature uh, of the ideal gas is equal to t, uh, to t. Well, and uh, what else is given? Uh, it's an, uh, there is another important moment that um, uh, the points O, 1 and 3 lies, lie on the same line, uh, which comes uh, from the origin. Well, uh, you will see a bit later that it will help us to uh, derive a formula. And this is what they actually ask us to do. We are supposed, we're expected to derive a formula, uh, uh, which will allow us to calculate the total amount of work done by the gas when it goes through these uh, steps one to two and two to three. Well, this is the assignment. Okay, now let's uh, consider what's the first thing we should start from. And I guess that we should get started from the fact that, oh, by the way, I'm sorry, again, as usual, I wanna say that uh, before you start, uh, before you continue watching this video, please make a pause and try to um, work out the solution to this problem on your own. And then only should you um, resume watching the video to compare your findings with mine, okay, with my solution. Who knows, maybe your solution um, may turn out to be uh, much more effective and shorter it's okay, by the way. So let's come back to our sheep. So what's the first uh, step we should start, uh, we should get uh, started from? So I guess it's this one. Uh, this is the first uh, conceptual idea that the total work done by the gas uh, should be considered as the sum of the work done by the, the gas in step one to two. And uh, the work done by the same idle gas in the segment two to three right however we should take into consideration the fact that um in step one to two uh the pressure uh holds constant for that reason there is no work done by the gas and we understand that uh, this part of this uh writing is equal to zero 
as for the work done in the segment two to three, when the pressure uh, uh, keeps constant. So we remember this formula, it's um, P times delta V, right? Uh, in this case, uh, P equals to P2, and delta V is uh, the change. It's uh, V3 minus V1, because V1 actually is uh, V2. Yeah, we understand that it's as a whole, as a forward way. So, but at the same time, if we deal with ideal gas, and this is the case, um, we should uh, remember that we can uh, continue the writing. Uh, uh, if we remember the um, ideal gas state uh, equation, uh, let me write down here, it's P times V equals uh, nu times R times T, right? And if we apply this formula to this writing, we will we can write that it, it, it equals to it's equal to uh, nu times um, R, is gas, the gas constant, right? Uh, times uh, T3 minus T2. But we remember that in this at this point, at this point, the temperature of the system is equal to T. For that, for that reason, we can rewrite it as this one. Uh, nu times R times T minus T, this T2. Okay, this is our first tip. This is our first tip. Now, uh, we also should uh, see, uh, we should analyze what's uh, what's uh, what's given, what we've got. We've got new, yes, here it is, new moles. We've got R, it's a gas constant, uh, and we've got T. But what we don't know is uh, the temperature of the idle gas at point two. And this is what we should uh, um, concentrate our force on. Let's do that now. And um, to understand uh, what it equals to, let's consider this uh, part of the process, one to two. So in the segment one to two, uh, as we see the uh, volume of the ideal gas keeps constant, right? And for that reason, we can apply we can apply uh, uh, Gay-Lussac uh, law, gas law, according to which um, P one over T one equals P two over uh, T two. And uh, as I have mentioned above, so we need to know uh, something about the temperature of the gas at point two. For that reason, from this relation, let's exp uh, express T2. And it's it's a, it's a proportion, and for that reason, it's very easy to uh, express it. So uh, T2 equals to uh, T1 times P1 over P2, right? I, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, P2 over P1. Yeah, my fault, sorry. Well, anyway, uh, but we also know uh, what this uh, equals to. It, it equal is equal to K. For that reason, we can write the T2 equals T1 times K. Yes, because we can see that here is here it is what we need. What I have just referred to P2 over P1 equals K. Okay, so far so good. And now we can plug this into this formula. And for that reason, I can write that A equals nu, which means the number of moles of the ideal gas, times R times uh, T minus T, okay, K, I'm sorry, K times T1, okay? So everything's fine, except for the thing that we uh, know nothing about T1. We've got no information uh, given in the uh, in the problem, but it's not a, a dead end. I will tell you why. You see, um, <clears throat> the text of the problem says that points O, 1, and 3 lie on the same line which comes from the origin. It is the origin of the system of this coordinate system. And um, it's a very, very clear hint for us what we should do. At this point, we should uh, refer to algebra. I, I always say that um, 
a chemist as well as a physicist uh, must know mathematics pretty well to be able to deal with different types of problems. Well, and uh, let's uh, use it now. Well, um, I just wanted to, to uh, refer to your uh, school algebra course. Let me uh, show it here. When we deal with um, uh, such uh, such um, a graph, such a function, uh, which comes from the origin uh, uh, of the Cartan system, uh, we know that that we uh, y one that x one and y two and that it x x two. So we know that the coefficient uh, let it be okay, not k, because we have this k yeah, in this uh, in this problem. Uh, the coefficient alpha, okay, equals our y one over x one, and it equals um, y y two over x two. And we've got the same situation here. Uh, what I mean is that um, p1 over v1 uh, equals p2 over, I'm sorry, over v3, right? Okay, but also, also, we should understand that if the uh, ideal guess, if the ideal guess went through uh, this way from point one to point three, uh, like this, okay, uh, in this case, we could uh, apply the common United guess law, according to which, uh, P1 times V1 uh, over uh, T1, okay, equals to P2 uh, times V3 over T, all right? Uh, what can we uh, draw, what conclusion can we draw from this uh, relation? Very easy. That means that uh, V3 over V1 equals P2 over P1. But we know that P2 over P1 uh, equals K. And that means that the relation between uh, the volumes at points 3 and 1 also is equal to K. Now, we need to, to express T1 for this formula because this is the only part of this equation we have no idea about. Let's do that. T1 equals P1 times V1 times T over P2 times v3, right? Now, what should we know about this part of this uh, writing, of this formula? It's equal to 1 over k. Yes, because p2 over p1 equals k, and that means that p1 over p2 equals 1 over k. What can we know and what can we say about this part of this formula? We've just found out that v3 over v1 equals k, which means that um, v1 over v3 equals 1 uh, over, k, over k again, and that equals 2. Finally, we've got that is equal to k over k squared. Very nice. Now, let's plug this, uh, this into this formula, and finally, we will get the following. So, a equals nu times r times t minus t over k squared. So we can um, um, uh, put t out of the brackets and we'll get new times r times t or minus one minus one over k squared. So if we simplify it, finally, we will get the following formula. New r t uh, over k and times k minus one. This is uh, the final formula which enables us to calculate the total amount of work done by the ideal gas when it goes through uh, this uh, parts one to two, which uh, when the when the volume is uh, constant and uh, plus 
two to three when the pressure is constant. I want to say that um, I'm, we are not talking about a cycle. What I mean to say is that points one and three are not united. So I mean to say that from point three, the gas doesn't go back to point one. No, absolutely. So this is the initial point and this is the final point. And this is the formula. I do hope that uh, you have managed to understand my explanation and uh, uh, I hope that uh, it will help you to broaden your understanding of the physics uh, or the physical um, foundation of physical chemistry. Because uh, unless you know physics well, unless you know mathematics, so you will never learn um, physical chemistry very well, you won't be able to apply your knowledge um, in reality. Thank you very much for your consideration. And we, I guess that you are ready to proceed to the next um, problem, which I have prepared for you. Thank you. And now we're proceeding, uh, proceeding to uh, the next uh, problem. Um, hold a second, please. Yeah, here it is. So, um, in the beginning, the state of new moles of ideal gas changes in the isobaric way from point one to point two when the pressure um, keeps constant. Then it, change, uh, it changes isobarically uh, along the uh, line two to three when its volume is constant. As a result, the gas does work A. Again, uh, the talk is not about uh, uh, an, an, the ideal gas making a circle, no, a, a cycle, no, only uh, these two steps, one to two and two to three, okay, and uh, going through these two segments uh, of the uh, process, the gas finally has done work A. Now, um, it's also known that the relation between the volumes um, in points one and two is defined as K. In other words, math mathematically, we can say that uh, the, uh, V2 over V1 is equal to K. Uh, again, it's known that points O, oh, sorry, uh, points O, 1, and 3 lie on the same line uh, which comes uh, from the origin, from this point. Well, and uh, they ask us to um, determine, to derive um, the formula, which would enable us to calculate uh, the temperature of the gas at point three, the final point, okay? Now let's do that. Um, uh, it's um, the other side of the matter. I mean, the other side of the previous uh, problem when uh, we were asked to calculate, um, uh, not calculate, but to determine uh, the total amount of work done. In this case, the total amount of work um, done, done by the gas is given. And we are supposed to identify uh, uh, the temperature at a particular point. Well, let's do that. Uh, it's... Uh, it may seem the same, but uh, it only seems to be the same. But the first approach, the first step, uh, is uh, similar to what we uh, did uh, in the in the solution uh, to the previous problem. So the first point is that the total amount of work done by the gas is the sum of a the work done by the other gas in this segment of the process plus the work done uh, by the same amount of gas at uh, or during the step two three two to three well but we know that uh, we can see that uh in this um, duration of the process uh the volume uh keeps constant for that reason uh this component uh, of this uh, equation is equal to zero okay as for the work done by the ideal gas in this uh part of the process can be calculated um uh, this way is P1 times V2 minus V1. But again, uh, we deal with ideal gas. For that reason, uh, the ideal gas st uh, state equation is applicable. And uh, instead of this, we can write that it equals uh, 
nu, which means the number of moles uh, times R, which is uh, the gas constant, and mm, it's times the difference uh, of the temperatures at the two points, two, two, minus two, one. But we uh, should take another look at the problem, which says that at point one, uh, the temperature is equal to two. For that reason, we can rewrite it this way. Nu times R times T2 minus T. Now let's see uh, uh, let's see that T2 is the only part of this writing which is unknown for us. And uh, that gives us the idea that we should concentrate on uh, on the defining of T2, right? Um, the common way is that the common way of the solution is that um, we should double check that the final um, equation or the final formula we've got contains only uh, the things which are given uh, in the um, in the text of the, of the problem. For example, we've got new, it's constant, and we've got t, but uh, we don't know anything about uh, t2 yet. Okay, okay. Let's consider the uh, process uh, from point two to point three. Uh, during this process, uh, v is constant. So we can write that um, uh, when the gas goes from point two to point three, its volume uh, is constant. It doesn't change at all. Uh, it's uh, as a as a uh, and we for that reason we can write that uh, p one, okay, p two over t two equals p uh, three over t uh, three, right? And p two uh, is the same as p one. We can write that it, it, it is equal p one. Uh, over T2 is equal P3 over T3, okay? So, um, uh, we can write that um, uh, hold on a sec, please. Uh, I'll just, I think we, we have to come back to uh, this one. Uh, we need to identify the uh, Temperature at uh, point three, right? We've got everything. We've got we know a, v, r, and t. Let's express uh, t two from uh, this formula. It will be a over new times r plus t. Okay. Now, um, here from this uh, uh from this uh formula, we can ex it's a uh, simple proportion that we can express t three from this. It equals uh, two two times p three over p one. Yes, okay. And uh, we know that t two equals this, uh, and we can plug this into this formula. And finally, we'll get that it equals uh, p three over p one times a over new times r plus t. Okay. Um. Now we should um. Concentrate on the one phrase uh, given in the text of the problem that points 0, 1, and 3 lie on the same line which comes from the origin. Uh, what it means uh, in algebraic terms um, or was told in the solution to the previous problem. Um, now, we can apply this. Uh, mathematically, we can write that uh, points in mathematical geometry, points. Uh, can be denoted as this one. So points one, um, O, one, and three belong to the same line L, O, one, three, and for that reason, this is the, the symbol of uh, belonging, yeah? From mathematics, we know that it's a symbol of belonging. Uh, L is a typical um, uh, denotion for a line. That's why line is the first letter of this word is line. For that reason, we uh, choose L to denote a line. Okay, that means that that means that uh, P one P one over V one is just the same as P three 
over v3 or v2 just the same because in this uh, in this part of the process uh, v2 is equal to v3 and uh, and we can write that P3 over P1 equals V2 over V1. But we know that V2 over V1 equals K. Equals K. What does it mean? Now, it, it means that we can... It's P3. We can plug uh, K instead of uh, this into the final formula. I mean to say that T3 is equal to k times a over uh, new times r plus t. This is the final uh, formula which enables us to calculate the temperature of the ideal gas at point three. Well, now let's check uh, whether or not this formula we have just uh, derived contains only the things which are given um, in the text of the problem. K, yes, it's okay. A, yes, here it is. Okay. New, new modes, yes, it's okay. R is constant and T is given too. Uh, everything's fine. However, to make sure that um, it is, um, this formula makes uh, sense, Let's see whether or not this formula means temperature. Let's do that. Let's do that. How can we do this? This is uh, what we know um, as, uh, uh, how to say this in English, uh, the analysis of, uh, the analysis of uh, measurement units, I guess. <clears throat> we know that, a, the uh, measurement units of uh, work is uh, joules, right? Uh, the uh, measurement unit of uh, the gas constant is joules per uh, mole per Kelvin, right? And of course, um, uh, temperature is in Kelvins always. Let's see whether or not we've got uh, uh, Kelvins. So, J, instead of A, we write J, instead of uh, new, we write mole, right? And R, instead of R, we write uh, joules for mole Kelvin, okay? Plus, instead of J, Kelvin. Uh, K is a condition for that reason, um, it doesn't uh, have any measurement unit. So we see that everything uh, is fine. It means uh, Kelvin plus Kelvin, and it gives another Kelvin. So, Kelvin, so everything is fine. I mean to say that this formula makes sense, because finally, we need to um, get Kelvins, and we've got Kelvins. The analysis uh, reveals, the analysis of this formula reveals that we finally get uh, Kelvins. Thank you very much for your consideration, for your attention, and I hope that you're ready to proceed to the next uh, uh, problem. So, welcome back, and uh, I hope that psychologically and in intellectual terms, you are ready to uh, face up to another problem, um, which was offered to, to uh, Russian uh, applicants to uh, prestigious, univers prestigious university and uh, uh, you are going to see it in a few seconds on the screen of your computers here it is um so uh don't get uh, don't uh, don't get stunned okay uh, i'm pretty sure that uh, the assignment uh, may surprise a lot of you the things that you've got accustomed to dealing with ideal gases and all the standard uh, changes which uh, idle gas uh, can go through. However, it doesn't limit all the possible all situations uh, which um, uh, theory may offer you. Uh, what I mean to say is that uh, you must be able to be good at uh, solving uh, out any theoretical problem. And here is one of them. 
So at constant volume, the uh, molar heat capacity of idle gas is equal to C, V. Uh, we know that. Uh, however, the behavior of the idle gas is, uh, I'm sorry, it's not, is of course, it complies with the law V, which is equal to uh, T over, I'm sorry, alpha over T. Alpha over T, uh, I guess it's not uh, clear the scene. Uh, let me write it down here. So the behavior of the idle gas, um, it complies um, with uh, this law. Okay, and we are supposed to derive the molar heat capacity formula for this idle gas, uh, which um, uh, behaves this way, which uh, complies with this formula. Oh, it's uh, rather unusual, right? And uh, when seeing such uh, uh, such a gas law, many uh, people, many students uh, get lost. They don't know what to do. Well, um, in this case, let me give you a word of advice. You should go the standard procedure. Um, what we know is that uh, we are dealing with ideal gas, right? Ideal gas, and that allows us to uh, use the ideal gas state equation, which is P times V equals nu times RT, where nu means the number of moles of the gas, okay? Now, uh, we also know, we also know that uh, this gas, for some reason, again, for some reason, and there can be different, uh, di different circumstances, and why not? We can assume that uh, for some reason, this ideal gas uh, complies with this uh, gas law, okay? And uh, for that reason, for that reason, we can plug uh, alpha over T here into this formula, and we will get that P times alpha over T equals nu times R times T, right? Or let's express P from this formula. That means P equals nu times R times T squared this time over alpha. Okay, where alpha is just a constant uh, coefficient, okay? Some constant coefficient, okay. We are from this uh, guess uh, from this guess uh, law. Uh, we see that uh, the volume of the of the ideal gas is inversely proportional to its temperature. Well, um, now what can we do now? Let's uh, calculate the work done by this ideal gas. And please don't jump to uh, the thing you have already, uh, you already know that A equals uh, P delta V. I hope that you have understood that we are dealing with something different. Uh, in this case, um, the idle gas uh, behaves, doesn't behave normal, uh, normally, yes. And because of this law, we can't uh, uh, blindly follow what we already know. For that reason, remember the word of advice which I gave you at the very beginning of the uh, of our session. I told you that we should follow uh, the standard procedure. In this case, we should remember that uh, the work uh, done by Adel Gas can be calculated uh, as the in uh, as the uh, determination of integral uh, p times dv. And the limits of inter all the integration uh, of the integration are uh, v one and v two. Yes. Okay. Now we should plug this formula into the integral, and that will allow us uh, to write that it equals to integral new times r times t squared over alpha to dv, okay, to dv. But the problem is that, the problem is that we've got dv, 
and nothing of V is uh, seen in this part of the integral. It's a bit strange, and it gives us the idea that we should express V through uh, these uh, things. Let's do that. Um, let's come back to this formula, okay, and write down that V. We can express V from this. Um, I, do, uh, I do guess state equation, it equals uh, new times R times T over P, right? And we can differentiate the both parts of this um, writing, uh, and we will write dV equals to uh, the di uh, differential of mu times R times T over P, okay? Um, so what does it mean? What does it mean? Uh, it means, let me take a look. <laughs> I'm sorry, it means nothing. But if we take a look at this, uh, V of alpha over T, let's take differential from this. Yeah, alpha is constant. For that reason, we can put it uh, before the differential um, and we'll get uh, the dB uh, equals uh alpha times d, and instead of one uh, over t, we will write t raised to uh, minus one. And what, is, what does it mean? Uh, the differential of t uh, raised to minus one uh, degree. Let's remember uh, the formula from mathematics that uh, differential uh, of x raised to n equals to n times um, x raised to n minus 1 dx, okay? And now let's apply this formula. That means that dv equals alpha minus 1 as the, as the degree comes here as the coefficient, and we write it here as minus, uh, and t minus 1 Minus one gives us minus two, okay, dt. This is uh, what the uh, dv equals to. And now let's uh, plug this into the um, integral. We'll, we'll get that a equals a new uh, r t squared alpha. Um, Minus, we can write it before the integrals uh, symbol. Um, and now the limits uh, of integration change from V to T, T1 and T2 respectively. We also see that we can simplify this. And what we finally got is that the work done by such ideal gas is this one can be completed um, with the help of the integral new times r onto dt, right? Yeah, but the thing is that uh, new and r are constant for that reason, uh, both of them can be put before the symbol of the integral. We will get new times r integral t1 from t1 to t2. Uh, to t2 um, uh, dt and the integral and differential are like two enemies, they destroy each other, and we finally get mu times r times t uh, from t1 to t2, right? And at this point, we must apply Newton Leibniz formula. Uh, let me uh, remind you what it means when we calculate a, a definite integral with integration limits a, b. So we find uh, this, yeah, and it means, here is what it means. And all we need to do is just to write is uh, equal uh, to mu times r, t2 minus t1, or mu r delta t. Now we know that these gas, which complies with this formula, with, uh, with this gas um, uh, law, um, does the work which can be calculated uh, with this formula, okay? But what are we looking for? In fact, we're looking for 
um, this gas, uh, this gas is a uh, molar heat capacity. And let me write it here because the space is not. So uh, the amount of heat is equal new times C, and this is what we must find here, uh, delta T, right? At the same time, the change of uh, inner energy is equal to new times C isochoric times delta T. And we have just calculated, the uh, we have just derived a formula uh, showing um, the way how we can collate, uh, uh, calculate the work done by such a gas. So um, what's the mathematical um, equation of the first law of thermodynamics is here. Here it is, Q equals delta U plus uh, A, right? So let's substitute all these three parts with their equivalent um, equations. And what we've got here, it is. So it delta, uh, not delta, okay, let's start from uh, new, new C, times delta t, t, nu times cv delta t plus nu, uh, nu r delta t. Very obvious simplifications. And what we've got is this one, c equals cv plus Oh, I'm sorry. Actually, not plus. Uh, sorry, uh, my fault. Minus. I have forgotten uh, this minus. Here is minus. So minus, and here is minus, minus, and minus, minus. So that's for that reason, not plus, but minus, minus r. Here it is. This is the formula. Uh, which allows us to calculate the heat capacity of uh, the ideal gas, which complies with these gas uh, behavior, which is determined by this formula, where uh, its volume is inversely proportional to its temperature. Well, uh, I want to say that we can hardly do that. Uh, we can hardly find the formula if um, we don't know mathematics. As you see in the solution process, uh, we have to do uh, to turn to uh, integration uh, to uh, change the limits of integration. Um, we also have to uh, deviate, uh, etc. What I mean to say, my main message is that unless you know mathematics, you are not good. Uh, you are not a good chemist or a good physicist. Thank you. So I hope that you are ready to proceed to the next one. I mean, next uh, no, challenge. Okay, not challenge. Next problem. So welcome back, and um, let's proceed to the next uh, assignment, uh, which uh, uh, is from the same set of questions uh, for applicants to that university. Um, here it is. So at constant volume the molar heat capacity of idle gas, as usual, is equal to the CV, and the behavior of idle gas this time complies with the law. Let me write it down here again. So um, V equals alpha times T squared. As you see, the volume of the, of the idle gas uh, is proportional to uh, its uh, temperature squared. And we are asked to uh, derive a formula which would enable us to uh, calculate its molar heat capacity. Again, I want to say that you should understand one simple thing, that C is not the same as CV. When the temperature, uh, uh, I'm sorry, when the volume is constant, yes, uh, the heat capacity is equal to C with index V. But in this particular case, as a C, the volume changes with its temperature in a very unusual way, by the way. Uh, for that reason, uh, we can't believe that uh, the heat capacity of such a gas is equal to CV. Of course, no. And we are supposed to calculate this one. 
with the help and with the participation of this. So let's do that again. <clears throat> Uh, let's start from uh, the uh, final, from the logical final. Um, so uh, Q is equal to delta uh, delta U plus uh, worth, uh, um, worth A. Well, uh, it's the uh, mathematical um, uh, formula, uh, formula expressing the first um, law of thermodynamics. In term, Q is equal to the number of moles of the angel gas times um, times uh, its heat capacity and this what uh, this is our target uh, times delta t. Yes, this is the uh, usual. This is the usual um, formula uh, based on the uh, identification of what Q is or what uh, C is. As for delta U, the change of inner uh, energy of this gas. Uh, traditionally, it's equal to mu times c with index v times delta t. Okay, the problem is only uh, a. Uh, again, I want to say that because v changes uh, not in an unusual way, not in a usual way, we uh, must uh, derive the formula for a, and it's not p delta v in this case. Absolutely not. So what should we do? So we remember that we calculate uh, V as uh, the integral, this integral, yes. Well, and um, we can uh, substitute, we can substitute something to something, right? Let's do that. Uh, we've got this formula, V times alpha times T squared. So let's find the, derivative dv, because it's a part of this integral for that reason, we find, we are supposed to find uh, dv. So dv, in this case, is equal to differential of alpha times t squared. But alpha is a constant, for that reason, we can put it before the uh, symbol of differentiation. And it will be uh, alpha times d of t squared. But we remember that a d of x raised to m is equal to m x raised to m minus 1 dx. So let's come back. Uh, it means that it equal, it's equal to alpha. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, two goes first, two alpha, uh, two alpha, t, because two minus one, two minus one gives t, times the t. Okay, okay. Now, what do we do next? Uh, if we deal with the ideal gas, we can uh, use um, the ideal gas state equation PV times P times V equals mu times R times T. Okay. And let's plug uh, alpha times T squared instead of V into this formula and we will get this one. P times alpha T squared equals mu RT. Yes. And we can simplify this a bit. And finally, we'll get that alpha P uh, pt equals mu times r, okay? And from this one, we can express p, it equals to, uh, it equals, I'm sorry, mu times r over alpha t. Good. So we've got everything ready to uh, plug into this uh, integral. Again, a equals, let me rewrite this initial form of this integral. And for the time being, the integration limits are V1 and V2, but as you understand, we will change them into T, into temperatures. Okay, instead of P, we'll write this formula, which we have just derived, uh, mu times R over alpha T. It's uh, what P equals. And instead of DV, uh, we write uh, this one. It's two alpha T 
dt. And as the differential uh, contains t, um, the integration limits uh, are not volumes any longer. They are t1 and t2, respectively. So we can simplify it a bit. Uh, alpha and alpha t and t uh, goes away, and that's very nice. Two new and r constant, and we've got, we can write them down before the symbol of the integration, and that's very uh, good. We've got uh, integral uh, and dt. Uh, the integral and d, um, let me say, demolish each other. And finally, we've got two new, uh, two new r, t, okay? And at this point, we apply a uh, neutral Leibniz formula. Uh, it's this one. In other words, we substitute T2 in, in, uh, in, in, instead of T, and we subtract from it uh, T1. But T2 minus T1 uh, gives us delta T. And finally, we got T and mu R delta T, okay? Now, let's... Um, Come back to uh, the first law and uh, write uh, these uh, things instead. New times C del times delta T equals a new times C V delta T plus uh, the work done uh, two times new R delta T. Again, we can see that we can uh, simplify this equation substantially. News go delta T uh go to and finally we've got that c equals cv plus 2r and this is the formula which allows us to calculate the heat capacity of this gas which complies with uh, this behavior which is defined by this formula it's again uh it is uh, only theoretical uh, assignment nothing more than a theoretical assignment you can hardly come across uh, in this station. You can uh, you are very unlikely to come across uh, a gas uh, which uh, which complies uh, with this uh, behavior uh, gas uh, law. But you must be able to derive such things uh, just to train uh, your understanding how mathematics and uh, how mathematics works uh, in uh, chemistry and physics. Thank you very much for your attention. I hope that you have learned something new for you.